Hey everyone, welcome to another video of Mule Made Easy. In this one we'll be talking about Mule 4's error construct. Now this is part of a series made by myself and my friend Josh where we're picking out what we consider to be the bigger changes from Mule 3 to Mule 4 and walk you guys through those changes. Uh, so let's get right to the error. And so we'll start with a side-by-side -side comparison of the two objects. We're well, assuming that you guys are somewhat familiar with Mule 3's exception payload, but we're going to go over it uh, quickly. What I have here is what I consider to be the most useful parts of the exception payload, being the message, the info hash map, and the exception itself. And we can take a look at those here. I've set up this HTTP listener that calls a database that doesn't actually exist. So this will throw an error that we can take a look at. And so if we call that resource, we have that error thrown. Let's go into our catch block and start taking a look. So for example, let's say exception, right? And this is a regular Java exception, so we can do things like check what the cost was. So first we have that this is a messaging exception for Mule. And if we take a look at what the cost is, now we see that it's a DB connection exception. Uh, the other important part is exception. That message is still part of a regular Java exception signature and so we have an english description of what the error was right so it cannot get connection for url blah 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 like i said that database doesn't exist and this is something that's specific to this mule exception so we do exception that info we get this hash map within the hash map are some things that i find to be very useful so if we do element here we have the path to the processor that threw that exception. So the processor at index zero threw that exception and that happens to be at line 15. So you know exactly where to go and take a look. And also we have exception info element XML. And this will give you uh, the XML that constitutes that processor. And so you can take a look at that programmatically instead of going through the file and you can say, oh, okay, here, uh, the developer uh, missed a parameter in the, in the query or whatever the case may be. And if we start taking a look at Mule 4, we'll see that all of these elements are thrown together in what is known as the exception within the error. So I consider this to be a compatibility thing where everything that was available in Mule 3 is under an exception. Um, so it's kind of an exception payload within the error, right? So. I've set up the exact same scenario in Mule 4 so we can take a look, right? So we have the listener and that database that doesn't exist. So if we do this other resource, we can start taking a look. And so let's go into our catch block. And now you'll notice these are called data weave expression watches. And we'll have a video strictly on data weave, uh, but we'll just take it as is for now. So let's do error exception. And now here we have a, uh, a Java exception and again we can do things like let's check out the cost in this case it's straight away a SQL exception and we can do the same things that we uh, that we had before error exception what do we say message here we go cannot get connection for URL blah 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 what else do we have we had error exception info element and there we go the path to the processor line number um, and so this will be your meal made ec tip number one whatever uh, values or whatever elements that you needed to get from meal three you can get just the same way in meal four all you have to do is preface your expressions with error so we can do exception info element XML. And there we have it. Now Mule introduces three entirely new objects as part of the error in Mule 4, that being description, error type, and error message. So let's take a look at description first. So let's do error description. And this ends up being the same thing as the message. It's just now, or it's just a top level element that you don't have to so you don't have to drill into the exception to see that uh, next we'll take a look at error message we'll leave error type last so let's see error message 
error message is an optional piece of information actually, so it might not always be there. In this case, it is null. And so error message, like I said, it's an optional piece of information that will only be there when Mule thinks that there is some information from the message itself that might be useful to you when the exception is caught. And so I've set up the following scenario to show you when that could be. So let me finish this execution first. So I've set up the following example. We have this rate limited resource. And the, the scenario is that you can't call this resource too often or else it's gonna respond with a 400 HTTP status and a payload that tells you to back off, right? So in milliseconds, back off for 1,000. Now, as a client, this information is useful because at that point you say, okay, it's just a second, I can wait a second and retry the same operation versus if you don't have that information, you have to give up at that point, right? You have to say, okay, an unrec unrecoverable error happened and just report it. Um, and so we've set up this other uh, resource here that makes use of that rate limited um, resource to take a look at the error. And so let's trigger that now, error message. Okay, so let's go into our catch block and take a look at the error message. Error, error message. So again, in the database example, that was null. But in this case, we have some information here. And so let's start taking a look at what might, might be useful to us. So we'll start with attributes. And now we see here, uh, these are the, so attributes are the equivalent of inbound and outbound properties that we had in Mule, but we'll have a video dedicated entirely to that. So for now, we'll take that, we'll take this as is. And so we have the status code here, uh, the headers that came back, HTTP, I'm sorry, um, application JSON, um, down here, the date of the response, so on and so forth. Now this is not too, too useful, but the payload itself would be. And so that's exactly what we have here. Back off for 1000. And because it's a data wave uh, expression evaluator, we can do MS back off and it'll automatically parse the JSON and give us what we need. So there we go, 1000. So let this be mule medici tip number two. As a server, always include information that would be useful for to your client, for your client to recover from that error. And as a client, always check the error message for any information that could enhance your error, handle, error handling. By the way, we'll also have a video entirely dedicated to Data Weave 2, so look forward to that. Otherwise, let's get right back into error type. And so I didn't show you guys the error type for the database scenario, but let me show you the one for this error, limit, error limited example. And so what we have here is error type HTTP colon bat request. Now, let me also show you the database one. Just got to trigger that error. Let's go into our catch block and take a look. So in this case is DB colon connectivity. And so what we see is the following format, namespace colon identifier. And in my opinion, this is just a simplification of Java exceptions where the namespace plays the role of the package and identifier the role of what would be the exception class name. So for example, in mule three, for a not found exception, we would have org mule module API kit exception, not found exception, and mule four, we just have API kit not found. And so the namespace, just as a package would do, is just trying to group errors by their domain, right, by the type of by the, the, the nature of the errors. And the identifier is just telling you which specific error from that domain it is. The next thing to know about error types is its type system. And that is that there are two super types from which all other errors will derive from. Uh, those two being mule any and mule critical. Now, mule critical errors uh, will be directly related to issues with the framework itself. So as an application developer, you will not be dealing with those those are actually not catchable by application code. Instead, we'll be dealing with mule any errors. And from there, I'm showing you here a couple of subtypes that mule has defined already. So we have mule connectivity or mule security. And from there, we have more concrete subtypes like DB connectivity uh, and HTTP unauthorized. 
Now, if you remember, DB connectivity is the one that I just showed you from our database example. And so we can see that super type system here. Uh, so if we open this, we have the identifier in the namespace, and we see that its parent type is mule connectivity. We can open that and see that its parent type is mule any. And if we open that, we see that that one has no parent. We will have a video entirely dedicated to error handling, but I will mention that if you have um, some error handling to catch DB connectivity, then it'll only catch this specific subtype. Whereas if you set it to catch mule connectivity, then it'll catch any subtype of mule connectivity, including DB. And if you set it to catch mule any, at this point you're just catching any error that any component is throwing. Okay, now the last thing to note about error types is that mule4 also gives us the ability to define our own error types. Like we see I have here my app, my business error. And I think the entire concept of error type, like I said, it's just a simplification of Java exceptions. It's a lot easier to read and write, you know, a simple namespace and identifier than it is to write an entire Java exception class. And I think this is an attempt uh, to lower the barrier for maybe less technical stakeholders to understand error handling in Mule. Uh, I've been in many situations where we're reporting errors, but unless you really understand Mule, or on top of that, unless you understand the application code itself, you might not really understand what is going on. So I think this is a, a, an attempt in that direction. Which takes me to my last slide, which is about error mapping. Mule 4 allows you to map any error thrown by any component into a more meaningful error that you define. So for example, let's take the database connectivity error that we had before and map it to something more meaningful. And so we'll do that live now. So what we'll have to do is we go into our database component here, go into error mapping and say, okay, I want to create a new mapping. I want any error thrown by this to say, okay, we'll call it my app as a namespace and identifier. Let's just say um, underlying system on available. Okay. And so let's take a look now. I've run into this error before, so I was expecting it. What's happening here is that Studio is complaining about the order of these directives, right? It needs this error mapping to be in a specific order, but it didn't do it automatically for me. So this is likely a bug. So we'll just reorder that ourselves for now and wait for this to rebuild and then trigger this. Oops, caps. Okay, okay, so we trigger that. And let's take a look now within the catch. And there we have it. Now, any error type thrown is going to be called my app underlying sys unavailable. And so this will be mule made easy tip number three. Always map interesting errors. So any error that might be a little harder to understand or any error that is important for other people to understand better, always, always, always map it into something more meaningful. And I think that pretty much concludes this video on error on Mule for Error. Uh, please leave us any feedback that you have, uh, what worked in the video, what didn't work, or uh, what other topics you'd like to see. Otherwise, thank you for watching.